The Last of Us Part 2, all main characters ranked. Before we start, let's get two things out of the way. First, for obvious reasons, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't played the game yet or watched a Let's Play, but still want to experience it, this might not be the best video to watch. Second, because the best character in The Last of Us 2 is not necessarily the most likable, I also added a likability scale from 1 to 10 that might even oppose the ranking, because don't we love a good anti-hero? Number 13, Isaac. Don't let him fall asleep. Yes, sir. Let's go up. For a character that gets introduced in numerous notes and conversations, Isaac stays pretty one note, and it almost feels as if Naughty Dog had bigger plans for him that might have been cut due to the already big scope of the game. As it is, I can't even tell whether he's likable, and as a character he's mainly just there to move the plot along. No. It has to be all of them. Compared to other community leaders we get to know in The Last of Us universe, Maria, Marlene and even David, Isaac is nothing but a cardboard cutout, and it's a shame because with Jeffrey Wright as a mocap and voice actor, there surely was a way to make him more interesting. Number 12, Manny. Abby. <laughs> oh. Easy. Look, I get the point of Manny. Every action horror movie since the early 80s had to have a badass ladies' man with a soft spot for their friends, but Manny never really took off compared to the many other, much more complex characters. Having many one night stands and boasting about them, caring for your father and being a ruthless killer is not the kind of interesting character design in the year 2020. Yeah, it, who was it this time? That cook chick? Nah, the weather chick. On a likability scale, I give Manny a solid 5, because he helped Abby out multiple times and he did not enjoy the WLF's torture chambers. I don't miss this place. But his weird Don Juan stick, as well as him more than once talking about the joy of killing other people, dropped the ball for me. You'd miss fucking up scars. I don't think so. I'd go crazy. Number 11, Nora. Speak of the devil. Nora, we barely knew ya, and you're still more likable and complex than many. Even though we don't get too many glimpses on Nora as a person, she seems to be fun, loyal and able to make hard decisions if need be. I never thought I'd see you on Isaac's bad side. 8 out of 10 on a likability scale, minus 2 for rubbing Joel's death in, but then again when you're dead already you might not want to cuddle your murderer. You still hear his screams? I hear them every night. Yeah. Yeah, that little bitch got what he deserved. And even as a character, she manages to be interesting enough with a few scenes we get before that horrible, horrible, horrible ending. Number 10, Lef. Despite his total lack of humor and ongoing devotion to the cult that wants to kill him, Lev is a good 8 on the likability scale. I deduct one point for correcting Abby on the term scars, but still referring to her as a wolf. You think we're gonna see a lot of scars? Seraphites. My mom would say that. About wolves. And I deduct another point for that weird, fierce speech while Abby was shaking with terror on the elevator. Can I give you some advice? It's hard to not like someone who gleefully swears for the first time, tries hard to learn the names of the people he just met and get over his fears of dogs so he can pet them. Hey. You wanna pet her? It's okay. Yeah, see? However, when it comes to the writing of Lev's character, the decision to let Yara tell a story instead of having him tell it, coupled with the fact that Lev spends most of the time asking Abby about New World stuff and preaching the gospel of the Seraphites, renders him a little too cliched. And even though on a metaphorical level he is supposed to be what Ellie was for Joel, Lev never really gets the depth of character he probably deserves. It's almost as if the idea of Lev is better than the execution. Fuck these scars. Seraphites, whatever. Yeah, fuck them. Never heard a Seraphite cuss before. It was my first time. 
Number nine, Yara. Yara. On a likability scale, Yara is a great 9, minus 1 points because of cult affiliations. But as a character, she is mostly acting as the mouthpiece of Lev's story, and we don't really get to know her, her story, or her own ambitions. For a long time, I didn't understand why he was questioning the laws. Yara's main goal is to protect her brother, and that is amiable enough, but I still wish that we would have found out more about her since she does seem to be a little bit more aware of the downsides of the Seraphites than Lef, and would probably have added a lot to the understanding of how life as a Seraphite without the cool eight colored glasses would be. So far. Yeah. <laughs> Good. The small insights into Yara we get are so nuanced that it's a shame that she spends most of her time talking about her brother. Number 8. Tommy. That's a lot. I love Tommy so much. But the game does a weird 180 with his character that is kind of plausible, but unfortunately not much discussed in the second game. Portrayed as the more conscious and morally balanced as well as emotionally open Miller brother, Joel's death triggers Tommy back into his days as a hunter and shows some truly dark sides of his that we haven't seen previously. Tommy did this. This? No way. That was definitely him. What's a little disappointing is that we hardly get to find out what motivates Tommy and how he explains his own change from responsible community leader to ruthless and somewhat asshole-ish John Wick. Even though Tommy is a perfect 10 on the likability scale for the first game, in part 2 he drops down to a rather disappointing 5 because, despite everything else, who leaves the amazing Maria a pathetic note instead of talking things through? Not to mention his visit with Dina and Ellie. Manners, Tommy. They got what they deserved. Number seven, Jesse. Hey. Morning. Sorry, I totally overslept. Just give me a minute and I'll get dressed. I heard you had quite a night after I left. When it comes to likability, Jesse is a straight 10. Sorry, not sorry. But who is gracious enough to not hold it against their friend when they kiss their ex and even makes light of the situation? Jesse is loyal, funny, smart, and not the kind of dude that boasts of his conquests or needs to prove his manliness otherwise. Looking at you, Manny. More than that, his emotionally available character is explained perfectly by simply having awesome parents that probably pampered him a lot when he was younger. My mom only had this one kid, the root child, about this boy who turns into a forest to save the village. Okay. To keep things fresh though, my mom would improvise different endings. What puts him on a solid 7 in this ranking is due to the fact that Jesse is nearly too good to be true. Is he really the perfect guy who always makes the right choices? Is there nothing that Jesse can't do? Well, with the exception of surviving. Sorry, too soon? Hey, be smart about it. Number 6, Mel. Hi. Hey. Mel gets a lot of flock because in a way she is an adversary of Abby. Since Abby dislikes Mel and we are more likely to sympathize with Abby, it's easy to dismiss Mel. But as a character, Mel is absolutely brilliant with her own set of complicated morals. Yes, she goes after Joel just like the others and opposed to Owen, she even wants to kill Tommy and Ellie along with Joel to leave no trace. He's right. We can't have loose ends. But when it comes to the failed truce between the Seraphites and the Torture in general, Mel is much more level-headed and she helps Yara without any questions asked. That was in retaliation to us shooting those kids. Okay, but those kids attacked our guys. What would you do? I don't know, not real them with bullets? Additionally, the complicated triangle with Owen and Abby gets Mel to show her vulnerable side. There is an awkwardness between her and Abby from the get-go, one that Owen has a certain responsibility for and even Abby is not necessarily mature in how she talks to and about Mel. And Owen's okay with this? Why would it be up to Owen? Later on, Mel is outright hostile. But that makes her a great complex character that shows that she will help Abby when it comes to Yara and Lev, but does not just ignore her own feelings regarding Owen and Abby. After all, Mel is pregnant and is supposed to watch how the father of her baby sails off with his ex? Actually, I'm going with them. But not if you come. 
On a likability scale, I would give Mel a good eight because putting your own complicated feelings down for a minute to help strangers in need is pretty solid in the world of The Last of Us. This is Yara. <laughs> what did this? A hammer. It wasn't me. Slow her down. 